Hey guys, it's Via again, and I am going to show you the second part of my coursework. And if you want to see the first part, just click right here. Here, here. And yeah, there's still one more part to this video, but enjoy this one. Don't forget to keep working, or else you won't get your grade. <clears throat> so, this is the second part of the video series, and this time our theme was ornithology which is basically a sophisticated word to the study of birds so yeah uh, first things I first thing I did was I just found a picture of a bird eye and then I drew it <clears throat> and it does I think it's the graphite that I used in the mix with a different kind of pencil and it gave it, gave it this bad look on this area but it, it is very detailed <clears throat> and that is one thing, you need to make it look very detailed or else it's not gonna get a very good point <clears throat> and then I did a color version, this is more like mixed media so I not only used watercolors but I also used pencils and pen did I use a pen? I think I did. Probably. I used a variety of things just to make it look as much as I could to the original picture. But now that I look at it, it could have some more detail on the feathers. <coughs> then I chose the bird I wanted to um, do my product on, which was the rosy faced lovebird. And if you want to read this part, you can read it. And there's also this as well. Actually, no way. This is a description. I don't know if you can read that. So, description of this, which is, which was basically me doing sort of um, fabric manipulation with various colors. Instead of it just being focused on the shapes, you, I was also focusing on the colors, which were basically the colors of the bird, which are blue and green. I didn't really use the red because I just wanted to focus on the other ones. So I did some research on the bird, I drew it. So this is basically the bird. So I was looking at the feathers and the various tones that the bird had. Then I drew it in black and white, just as I did with the other picture. But this time with the actual bird I was looking at. <coughs> and then I took this picture. I made the bird a... I drew it like... I got this picture and I drew it. And then I turned this drawing into a... Android, which I am actually really really proud of. This took ages to finish, and as you can see, I did really really small stitches, and <coughs> I was trying my best to be as accurate as I could to the original image. <laughs> this is harder than pencil because you're trying to draw with stitch with stitches, not just shading in. You have to every every stitch has to be placed in a specific area so that you can have some sort of gradient so stitches going into each other and as you can see here the red I did red stitches over the white stitches so that I could get some sort of gradient effect and here you got <coughs> more pictures of the same type of bird same species so after that I decided to do some monoprinting. F well, <laughs> so after that, I got various leaves. Uh, look, <laughs> so after that, I decided to do a collage with feathers in black and white. And then after that, I did monoprinting. And from every time you do a monoprint, you get this. So if I was doing I was, I think I was doing a green one, so I did the green monoprint, which I didn't really like. But before you do it, before you start drawing, you always have an extra, 
a uh, piece of paper which is called the calcomania so when you have the paint on the table <coughs> before you start drawing you always put a try and take the excess paint and that is called the calcomania then you I went I drew over it so I did a monoprint over the decalcomania from this monoprint I also got a ghost print which is basically the opposite of the monoprint <coughs> and I think this was the green one but I just covered it up with um, mixed media so going over it with watercolors and oil pastels and just all kinds of things that I could find to make it more interesting and bring up the colors of the bird which is mainly green and blue but then you have a minor section which is red which I wanted to show in this mixed media <clears throat> you can read this if you want after going over the bird like after studying the bird for a while I decided to look at different hat designers well headpieces you might say so I have their various names <clears throat> and the work they do so Philip Tracy did these oh, these and well actually Philip Tracy did these two this person did those and so on I tried to make it look like I think you can see who did what. Then I did from their work I decided to draw it in pencil once again trying to do my own version of their work. You can write that. This one's not that bad and neither is that one but now that I look at it from the skills that I've attained in today's day and age I could do a bit better <coughs> this then I did some fashion illustrations of their work now these dr drawings were taken from pictures that are actually not on this board but it was taken from these art these fashion designers well hat designers I think one of them was Philip Tracy I'm not 100% sure <coughs> if you wanna read this I then did a preliminary version of my final hat. Well, at the when I started doing it, I didn't really know what was what was I thinking, what was I planning to do for my final piece. I sort of just went in and made these various um, pieces, and I just tried to follow my drawing. Well, this is this was actually really primitive as it didn't have many details on it, it was just various leaves of this, not leaves, why well, keep saying leaves? various feathers, well feather like shapes layered on top of each other with this over it <coughs> and that's why it's called the preliminary piece because it's not the final one, it's just an initial idea so I got my friends to take pictures of me <laughs> and then you can read this and from this picture I used tracing paper to trace over it and I tried to develop this this initial idea by adding more detail to it so making it different I also had this here which is an attempt at trying to make this do the same thing just with a different material. This is called acetates, and what I did was I printed onto this acetate. So I had an image, I think it was of like a background of one of these, which I scanned and then I printed on a normal printer onto this material so I could get this effect. And I had I have this material as well. This is called Angelina, and what you can do is you can iron this, well you need to put a paper between this and the iron but you iron it 
and before it's really fluffy afterwards it's just a flat piece of I don't know of Angelina basically and it's really shiny and it gives a nice effect to the work so before going on to my final piece I decided I would about artists, about designers. So before I did my final piece, I decided that I still wasn't developed enough and I didn't know enough about design and what different designers do in their work. So I decided to make Alexander McQueen's work and uh, Iris Van Kerkel's work. And from it, Iron. As Iris Van Herpen uses a lot of technology to make her work, she I think she uses 3D printing and laser cutting maybe? I'm not quite sure, but 100% she does 3D printing. Now in school we didn't have a 3D printer, but we did have a laser cutter. So I made this design of her, just a simple wing, so a bird wing, and I cut out the piece of acetate and I made this now when they're when they're by themselves they're quite simple but when you layered when you layer them they're actually much better and much more interesting and I mixed them with normal feathers just to see what kind of effect I could get which was actually not that bad I did another fashion illustration of one of the hat pieces I don't know I think this was in one of Alexander McQueen's runways. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember. This was a little while ago now. And as they were fashion designers, both of these, I made another... Um, what's this called again? Fabric manipulation sheet, as you might call it. With trying different techniques and layering them as you can see I think I wanted this to stay open not quite sure, don't remember using acetate so part of this was hand hand sewn in others were machine embroidery and yeah you have yo-yos you have this, this was made with a fabric that dissolves in water so Everything here was sewn in the sewing machine. And after, what you do is you take it and you put it inside water. And, oops, oop, 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 I'm losing it. Okay. And as it goes inside the water, the only thing that stays is the thing you sewed on a sewing machine. So the fabric that you had sewn it onto disappears. Well, dissolves. It doesn't disappear. <clears throat> so, yeah just trying to layer various fabrics you can read that next So this sheet, well this board, was all about my final experimentations before I went on to the final piece. So I had my um, idea, this is my sketch, not sketch, but like drawing of the idea that I had and what I wanted to do on my final piece according to the bird and to everything I had learned and to my preliminary piece, as if you can remember. I had layered different feathers or feather-like shapes, which was what I was trying to do again. And I just repeated it over and over. Then I have these, which were basically after we learned a new technique, which is called batik, and mono printing onto fabric, and I don't remember what this was, but well. 
and also various pieces of fabric made with different techniques so hand embroidery well trying to embellish and this is lino printing this is batik wood dyeing this is batik as well wood dyeing hand this is machine embroidery um, and laser cutting here and we have more hand embroidery slash embellishment and these are actually pieces of fab of fabric which were samples from my final piece um, this is the description if you want to read and I had this little book so as I did this board I also made a little book to go with it which was what I used to um, just note down everything that I was doing and where did my ideas come from this was the f first drawing I did before I did the final big one this was actually something that I did before as soon as we started the first page this is what I did so as soon as we got this theme I came up with this idea and I basically sort of I didn't cheat but I worked my way towards this so as soon as I knew which bird I was doing, I immediately decided I wanted to do something like this. Now you can do that, it might be helpful. This is not very important, it was just me thinking about how many of which did I need and then how would I layer different fabrics to make different effects. So I glued in fabric, the fabric that I was going to use. And how would the back of the hat look, the headpiece would look like, and what was I thinking, what was I going to use. I was thinking about the leaves of a cactus, so in between the feathers there's a cactus because this bird lives somewhere in, in Africa where there's, um, it's really desert-like, so there's a lot of cactuses around. Um, this is an idea that actually did not go forward because it was just too time consuming and I couldn't keep it up. Then we have this other idea. I don't know if I went through with this. I'm not, I don't remember. This is a page of just various fabric manipulation techniques and once again, if you can see, this goes with that. So they match up with each other because I actually used it in the final piece. I have more Angelina here. As you can see, as I told you, it's a flat piece. And just more fabric manipulation. More ideas. I was I looked at I found this image on the internet and what I did I just copied it down because it was just black and white and I colored it in. Um this is another idea which also I ended up realizing that it was too time consuming so I had to do it in a different way and then I drew the headpiece again just in different angles so that the examiner could see what my idea was and I already knew what model I was going to use so this was a drawing of my friend and I just I wanted to show what was going on in my head as I went through this. Um, this I ended up doing, which was actually a really good idea. So it's a mix of fabric dyeing, mono printing, and embellishment. This was also something I went through with. As you can see, I actually did it. See, these are the examples. This is actually fabric. So this was lino printing, and this was just dyeing various stages. So first I dyed it light blue, then I went with the batik, and then I dyed in between the lines that I made with yellow and blue. And this is just crazy, I just threw a bunch of dye on the light blue that I'd, I had done, and I just wanted to make a mishmash of colors, which were still related to the bird. Just I wanted to give it a more natural look. So there's contrast between this and this as this is very straight and 
when we thought we might say, and this was just random. And then I did this, was which was the Calcomania. So, um, I did the Calcomania on, I think it was on paper, yeah, I used this, so it was paper, I used paper, not only did I use fabric, but I also used paper, so I could have a range of different materials in my work. Then I also had this, which was on the front. As I said at the beginning, my bird not only has blue, but it also has green on its main colors, and in the face it's red, so I wanted to show that in my work. <clears throat> I just kept going, describing what was I doing and how would I do it this, this is that see, this is that thing and this is this up here oh, hey look at the birdies and this is this see and I just described how I did it. <clears throat> and I wanted to leave with a little cute drawing at the back of the bird that I was using. So that the examiner could see where I was getting my inspiration from. Whew. This video is already pretty long. <clears throat> this is why I have to do three, three parts. Or else we would be here for a whole hour watching me. And you'd be bored of me. Maybe you are, I don't know. Um, so... Um, this is the final piece board. I took a various, various, um, God's sake. I took various photographs of various angles of the um, final piece in the model's head. And then I basically wrote about it, as you should. Or else you won't get your marks if you just do things aimlessly. You need to explain why you did them. Or else the examiner won't really know. As I said, I used my friend because actually she had she has like a dark red hair because she had dyed it, and I thought that was just perfect for my work because, as I said, the bird has a little bit of red, so this red was also contrasting with the green, as they are um, what do you call them? Compliment? No, complementary. What are they called? I forgot. I think they are complementary colors. They're opposites on the color wheel. There you go. Um, and yeah, I just tried to make the board still look good because I had this space in the middle, and I didn't know what to do with it. So I decided I would just go in with charcoal, and um, yeah, it's charcoal and oil pastels, and do this. Now I don't have the final piece here with me because it's in school still. But you can see how it turned out from these images. It wasn't too bad. I think this was a bigger an improvement from the first piece that I did. Is this was in year ten, so I had learned more things and I was using more skills, and I knew how to work with fabric better. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you missed the first video, click here. If you want to watch the next video, which is the final exam, you need to click here. <clears throat> so yeah, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to share with your friends, share with your friends because you might want to help. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!